Hi, it's Pavel with a C++ homework from the book uh, Starting Out with C++ from Control Structures to Objects. And this is exercise 14 from chapter 5. And uh, we will write a program that prompts the user to enter the number of students in the class, then loops to read in that many names. And once all the names have been read, uh, we will determine which uh, student will be at the front and which one will be at the back. Uh, basically, which one has uh, in alphabetical order, which one is the first and which one was the last from all the names entered. And um, we will assume that no two students have the same name. And uh, input validation will be that we won't accept uh, less than one or greater than 25 for the number of students. All right, so basically we'll be looping through a bunch of names uh, that the user will enter one by one and we will determine which one is the first and which one is the last by the alphabetical order. All right, um, so first we need the number of students. That's what the user will enter. It can be an integer. Uh, we need the string. Uh, student name, student name, and um, we need uh, two strings, one first student, student, and string last student, all right? These are the names that we will be displaying at the end. Okay, so let's... Uh, Let's ask the user for uh, for some input. Now, remember, we do not accept uh, the number of students less than one or greater than 25. So uh, it cannot be less than one. So I will simply say over here, not, not student name, but a uh, number of students equals one. Now I can uh, do this while uh, number of students, uh, I'm sorry, let's do, it's going to be a zero, initialized to zero. And now, uh, because what I'm trying to do is uh, to make this loop execute and to, uh, that will be the loop where all the input will happen. So number of, so while number of students, students is less than one or which it is, so it, it will, uh, the first time uh, this line is hit, the body of the loop will execute because our number of students is zero, which makes this con the condition true. All right, so while number of students is less than one or our number of students, uh, this is a number of students, not number of students, uh, so number of students is greater than 25. All right, so do not accept less than one or greater than 25. Okay, so yeah, this is the condition. While this happens, uh, we will simply tell the user to enter a number of students. Please enter number of student must be a number between 1 and 25 and then on a new line I will go and uh, and uh, capture that name um, that the user entered into a variable student name so since we initialize this to zero, this is true, and the user is asked to enter another the number. And this is not student name, I got it all wrong again. This is the number of students, this is the integer, number students. So the user will enter the number and will store a number in number of students. If the number is less than one or greater than 25, I mean, even if it's not, it goes back to the loop and it checks the condition. If this condition is true again, in other words, if the 
user enter the wrong number, this is displayed again, and a uh, user has to enter another number. If that number is wrong again, you know, and this condition is true, then again, it goes here and asks for the username, I mean, for the number of students, and it will keep asking, it will keep looping until this number is uh, between 1 and 25, which makes this condition false, and then the body of the loop is skipped and the program moves on to another line. So now we got the number of students, now we got going to loop through that uh, and, and uh, ask the user to enter those names. So integer i equals 1, and it's 1 because it's the it has to be at least 1 anyway. Uh, Actually, it doesn't matter. It could be uh, could be zero. It doesn't matter. You can start from zero, and uh, um, i is less than the number of students. I plus plus. If you started from one, i equals one, then you would have to have i is less or equal to. In other words, you have to loop that many times, and if you start from zero. That, uh, then uh, you know you have to have just less because otherwise it would be uh, it would loop one more one extra time than it should have. All right, so uh, we will ask the user for the name. So please enter student name. You know what? Now let's start from one because I'm going to do this. Over here, please enter, and over here, I will do uh, please enter student. No, not here. Sorry, please enter student or name of, and yeah, let's do that. Please enter name of student number, and over here. So we'll do the I and, and the line. So basically, it will say, please enter a uh, name of student number one, then number two, I will equal two, then I will equal three, and so forth. So it will, it will kind of uh, tell us how many students we entered so far. And we'll store that name. Uh, Okay, we'll start it in our student name. Now, this would simply output the names. That would uh, uh, one at a time if you do, uh, you know, our output right here, our C out. But uh, we're supposed to only really capture the first uh, in alphabetical order and last. In order to do that, we need a little conditional statement. We have to capture the first enter entry that the user makes that would be the first name entered and that name we will assign to our first name and last uh, name because i mean our first student and last student and we will assume those are that net and that it's the first name in the alphabet as well as the last name according to the alphabet and we will use that name to compare uh, against with every iteration of the loop, with every other name entered, will be compared to that name, and then eventually, if a, a condition is met, the, the names will be switched. And uh, it's easier to see uh, than said. <laughs> so let, let me let me do the coding, and you will see what I mean by that. Uh, so if uh, i equals one, this is the first name entered. Then we will assign first student. Uh, I'm sorry, over here, this has to be entered first. We need the user input first. And after the input, we will check if this is the first username entered. If it is, so our first student equals student name, and our last student equals student name as well. All right, so the first name the user entered, this condition is true. 
So our first student equals student name, our last student equals student name as well. Else, in other words, for every other name entered after the first, we will do a little check. If a student name is less than first student, then our first student will now equal the newly entered name, the student name. Else if the student name is greater than last student, then our last student will equal the student name. All right. So this is a uh, basically switching the names. Again, the first name is simply assigned to the first student and last student. We go to another iteration, ask for another name. I equals two now, so this is skipped, it goes to else. And it checks, is the student name that the user entered now less than first student? If it is, then our first student now will equal the new name entered. If this is not true, it checks this condition. Is the student name that the user entered greater than the last student, which was assigned from the first name, I mean the first uh, iteration over here. And if it is, then we have a new last student. If it's not, we don't do anything. This will remain uh, as it was before. And that's all. <laughs> this is really all. And at the end, we will, uh, after all the names were entered, and all the, you know, this, they were all checked uh, in this conditional statement, we will have the first student and last student. So let's just uh, output those. First student is, and it is the first student. And end of line. And our C out last, last, student is, and that will be the last student in the line. All right, so um, yeah, this is really all. That's uh, It's fairly simple. Let's build and run. And see if uh, this condition works or if we need to do some adjustments. All right, so let's enter a number of students. So let's... Uh, Let's start with something smaller, five. So please enter the name of student one. I'll enter Pavel. And I will, number two will be Abraham. And uh, number three will be, I don't know, Tom. And uh, Zach. And number five will be, I don't know, whatever. Uh, Peter. And here you go. First student name is Abraham, which is correct. That's uh, A. It's, it's the first name in the alphabet from these five. And last student is Zach, which is correct too. Now let's check the uh, conditions uh, over here to you know to enter the number between one and five. If I enter one, it's asked for the name. I'll enter Powell, and now. First student name is Powell and last student name is Powell. That's correct. Now, if I enter a wrong number, let's say zero, please enter number of student must be between one and 25. It won't let me enter them until I enter the correct number. So let's enter 26, which is wrong again. 27, wrong again. Now, if I say 25, I can start entering, but I'm not going to enter 25 names. I just wanted to make sure that the uh, loop works with 25 as the, as the uh, upper bound and one as the lower bound for, of the condition and it does so uh, here you have it fairly simple again we have a student name that's the name the user will be entering we have the number of students we check whether the number of students is between 1 and 25 and we will be checking that uh, each time the user enters so the number of students and uh, we will only accept the number between 1 and 25. As long as the user will be entering the wrong number, this loop will be executing. Once the correct number is entered, 
we loop that many times, which is number of students, and ask the user to enter the student's name. The user enters the name. If it's the first name the user entered, we will assign first student and the last student to it, and then go to another iteration. Now, for every other name other than the first, uh, we go to else statement, and then we will check whether that name is less than what we currently store in our first student. If it is, then we switch them. We have the new first student. If it's not, if this is false, we'll go and check if the name that the user entered is greater than what we have currently stored in our last student. If it is, we'll switch them. If it's not, all both of these uh, uh, tests are false, then we simply go to another iteration and uh, don't, don't do anything here. Okay, so uh, like I said, fairly simple. Uh, I hope it helped you and I will see you next time. Take care.